Let's look at some of the reasons for the biogeographic patterns we see. Many of the similarities and affinities we see among groups of organisms in different parts of the world can be understood if we realize that the surface of the Earth has changed over time. The huge land masses have moved very slowly. Before continental drift, the continents all formed a single gigantic land mass called Pangaea. But by 144 million years ago, at the beginning of the Cretaceous period, the northern continents had separated from the southern continents. The northern continents called Laurasia, the southern continents Gondwana. By the end of the Mesozoic area, 65 million years ago, South America and Africa were widely separated, and many other patterns were emerging. But oh, while these continents are separated now, they used to be close to each other. Here's a diagram showing this Pangaea, every continent touching and together. The Cretaceous period with Laurasia and Gondwana land. And then in the early tertiary, the continents as we know them, pretty well formed. As continents drifted further apart, dispersal routes were changed. You know, when they're adjacent, it's easy for animals and plants to move, but as they move farther apart, not so easy. This table from our book shows some of the major biogeographic events in the history of the Earth that were caused by continental drift. The continents moving was one important factor, but also changing climate over time can explain the expansion and contraction of the ranges of many groups. During the Pleistocene, the Earth cooled into a phase called the Ice Age. At this point in time, glaciers covered much of the surface of the Earth, scooping and shaping the landscape. Nowadays, we recognize these major zoogeographic regions that explain animal uh, diversity patterns. Nearctic, Neotropical, Ethiopian, Palearctic, Oriental, and Australian. These were suggested by Alfred Russell Wallace. Nearctic includes North America, new, the New World or Western Hemisphere north of the equator. The Palearctic is Eurasia, the Old World or Eastern Hemisphere north of the equator. These two regions share a lot biogeographically because they were connected till fairly recently through Alaska and Siberia, and in Greenland also. And many species of plants and animals have what's called a circumpolar distribution. Both the Ethiopian and Australian biogeographic regions experience long periods of isolation. As a consequence, there are many distinctive species, genera, and families in these regions. And we can see on a map Wallace's line that explains, you know, patterns of biodiversity. The Oriental or Paleotropical region is tropical Southeast Asia and Neotropical Central and South America. It's interesting that the tropical Old World forests are more similar to temperate Old World forests than New World tropics are to temperate forests. And this is because there was much longer a continuous land connection between Old World tropical forests and temperate Old World forests. Here's a picture of Alfred Russell Wallace and Wallace's line, the blue line here going through the Celebes Sea between Borneo and Celebes Islands. But different scientists have proposed slightly different divisions. Huxley's modification shown in red, Weber's line 
shown further east. And Lydekker's line, which describes the limit of the Australian and New Guinean fauna. In the present day, the tree flora of Asia is much larger than that of Europe or North America, but it wasn't always that way. And if we look at the three continents in the late tertiary, you can see that Europe had the greatest number of tree species, many of them evidently present only as fossils, but these things have changed over time. We think of Florida as a place with a lot of mangroves, but actually in the New World sh coastal tropics, mangroves are less diverse than they are in the Old World. Tomlinson defines mangroves as salt-tolerant woody species, and there are many more plants that do that in the old world. It's important to con keep in mind the different catastrophes that may have contributed to patterns of species diversity and changes in biogeography. The Ice Age we talked about, but asteroids have hit the planet causing mass extinctions. And in the Yucatan, about 65 million years ago, there's geological evidence that many species went extinct. The dinosaurs, for example. But mammals and birds survived and then underwent radiation and many new species created after that. How do we know this happened? Well, the asteroid left deposits of fine clay that marked the boundary between the Cretaceous and Tertiary deposits. So this diagram can sum up what these things we've talked about. Speciation and immigration increases the number of species and different factors can cause extinction and habitats select for which species can survive there, influencing local diversity, where species compete, some are competitively excluded, and some may be eaten to death by predators. So it's at the local level, ecological interactions are very important at influencing diversity. But habitat selection is the factor that affects whether or not you find species in different communities at the larger level.